Hey everyone in YouTube land, this is BDC. Thanks for checking out this video on my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a short video on signal logic, uh, specifically the inverter type. Um, and I'm going to demo it on uh, a little ship over there that I've got uh, for doing thrusters and also in this uh, small plant nursery for uh, doing uh, motion sensors with lights. So let's see, let's start over here on this uh, hauler. This is one I made uh, about a week ago, but have it spawned here, so I figured this would be a good one to use. Um, going into the control panel of this thing, I have multiple groups set up for uh, thrusters and generators and that kind of thing like that. Um, and also over here in signals, I've got a similar type thing. So in the control panel under custom, um, this may be something that uh, many of you out there are already familiar with, you can assign a, a shortcut to a group over here and then anything inside of it will get, uh, when you click on the uh, active and active, will get powered on and off. Uh, for demonstration here, I've got these uh, two constructors uh, in this hauler that are, uh, that are bound to that. Um, However, you can also use signal logic uh, over here to do individual pieces. So this uh, hauler, one thing that I did on it um, is I wanted to use uh, groups of uh, groups of thrusters and combine them into one bank here and call them primary thrusters. So uh, let's see, let me open these guys up. All my non-grouped uh, thrusters will be in the standard regular groups. Um, by the way, just as a uh, note, whenever you're doing something like this, do not use auto group because that is the death of everything that comes with custom groups. It'll wipe all these things out and it will automatically reorganize stuff. So uh, once you get to the level where you're doing all this fancy signal logic and you're doing custom groups and things, just avoid this button altogether, okay? <laughs> um, anywho, so signal logic. Um, let's see, primary uh, thrusters. Uh, you'll see that uh, all six of these are set up as the inverter type. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, uh, circuit types you can use. Um, right now I'm just going to focus on an inverter and it's basically an on-off switch. It's real simple. Um, let's see, primary thrusters. As an example here, we go into signal logic and I've got primary thrusters set up under this group right here, or this entry rather. Um, and once you make a, uh, a new inverter, let's see, you can call it whatever. So assuming that SIG001 was inside over here, then that's how you would do it. You would select it by that. Um, I'm going to nuke that because I've already got this added. But it's real simple to add a circuit, and you can do it regardless of whatever you've got sitting over here on the left, uh, the left side. So you would make your circuit, and then you would... Uh, you would select it to match the name of whatever you have already in here. So my thrusters, in my case, I've got primary thrusters uh, as our example. And what you would do from there is, let's say, like for instance on this ship, you want to have an on-off based off of this inverter signal. So real simple. Uh, there's nothing to it. Um, one thing you can do is you can use this as a reverse switch. So like, let's say you've got a switch and by default, uh, or on your ship rather, you've, you've got uh, by default all of your thrusters turned on and you wanna make a signal that says reduced power mode or something like that. You could go over here, um, add, the, uh, add the text for reduced power mode, something like that, go into signal logic, come down here, add your circuit, uh, find reduced power mode in the list and then on anything that you want to switch off, when you switch this thing on over here, um, you can configure, say, like let's say, I think I was demoing earlier a couple of uh, front thrusters. So let's say we do, let me get out of this guy real quick, go back into God mode. Um, let's say we want to switch off thrusters when we do primary thrusters. So we kick primary thrusters on, you see the front two over here turn on, and these guys over here switched off. So the difference, uh, the thing that I did over here, go to single log logic over here, is I checked follow. And basically that uh, that reverses it. So um, really easy to do, uh, there's nothing to it. If you have a larger ship like this where you have multiple banks of RCS and thruster and things like that, and you want certain things to 
to follow um, with whatever uh, group you've got set up, then you have to go in here and individually do it all. You don't have to do this multiple times. All you have to do is just define this guy right here. You know, it's uh, it's real simple. There's nothing to it. Um, one other caveat to this: whenever you come in to uh, to test on a build, if like let's say you grab this or another ship or something, and you spawn it in, you may need to cycle this. Uh, it's something that's a little quirky in Imperion. I don't know if it's a bug necessarily or what it is, but you have to do that, and then you also have to make sure that signals uh, are turned on. Uh, if this is off, none of this works over here. So. That's a small example, short example for doing uh, thrusters with signal logics. Real, real simple. Uh, over here, um, we'll do another one here. It's a little uh, plant nursery I made yesterday. And I've got motion sensor set up for these three uh, blue mood lights. Um, let me darken a little bit. So these guys, they uh, only turn on whenever I enter the uh, box that's defined within this motion sensor here. Let me see if I can get up on it better here. Yeah, so on an interactive setup, really easy to set up. Um, there's probably a lot of tutorial videos out here on how to how to set this up. Uh, the keys are a little weird to do it. Um, but uh, basically, anytime I enter this red box, the motion sensor clicks these, uh, these three lights on in here. That's really easy to set up. It is an inverter signal as well. Uh, on here, I've got interior lights as a signal. And then I set it up on the inverter, uh, the inverter type, piece of cake, no big deal. And then what I do on the motion sensor is under signal logic, um, I make its on-off switch the interior light signal, okay? Uh, and then the signal that it goes out is light switch. So whenever the motion sensor clicks on, with this on, of course, obviously, think of this as like a master switch. Uh, whenever the motion sensor clicks on, uh, it activates light switch and so under these three lantern lights I have light switch and they are set to follow and this is not blocked in. Uh, if this were reversed, if that were clicked on, then all three of the lights would be on all the time and then entering in the motion sensor kicking off would turn them off so it would be the exact opposite. So. It's real. It's it's real easy. It's real simple. Uh, there's nothing to this. Um, and if you're a uh, a power uh, conserving nerd like I am, where you tend to look at kilowatts of everything, and you're looking for ways to to save power, it's a uh, it's an extremely helpful thing. Let me do a demo of one more thing real quick. It just came to mind. Um, so let's say you've got a. Let me find a good place to put this. Um, that'll look halfway normal, uh, even though I'm wrecking this blueprint here. Um, let's say you've got, make sure that guy's on the outside. Here, here we go, right here, I'll spin this guy around. So let's say you have a repair station. Um, this is something I really like to do, uh, the uh, motion sensor with uh, inverter signal on. Um, really, really like this. So your repair station, it's cool, you know, you got one built in your base and now you can repair stuff. The bad thing about it is, is it's a bit of a power hog, um, and some people I don't think know this. I didn't know this for a long time until I started getting really uh, nitpicky about the uh, the things I was building, in power and you know and stuff like that. So what I started doing is I would place a motion sensor right in front of it, okay, and just for giggles, let's color it to make it even, and. I know I'm auto grouping in this. It's fine. This is just a uh, a test thing. I'll get rid of this later. So I would uh, group the motion sensor and label it. Uh, let's say this is for the repair station because you can have a base that has multiple levers and sensors, and it's kind of nice to know what's what. Come over to uh, Signal Logic, and then I would add a circuit. Uh, let's name it. Uh, rip well, let's see if this will fit. Yeah, repair station power. Cool, that fits. So. I've added my signal logic uh, here, my inverter type circuit, and then repair station power. So I'd come back here to repair station, um, or excuse me, the, uh, the motion sensor for repair station. He's going to be switched on by repair station power, which is like a main power switch like I was explaining for the uh, interior lights. And then, let's see, repair station switch. One of the things I like to do is I like to make... The list over here will say something about power. I didn't do it with this nursery because there's only one signal. But if you have multiple things over here, um, it's easier to organize. Um, so I do power, power, power for all these types of things. And then when I'm defining 
these motion sensors uh, acting as switches, then I'll label them as switch up here. Okay, so over to, let's see, it's under equipment, I think, it's at repair station. Okay, now repair station is going to be powered by not repair station power. Uh, if I set it to that, then it would be powered by this toggle switch. You can see it flipping on and off back there in the background. Excuse me, uh, in, in here instead, we're going to set it up under signal logic for repair station switch. So it's going to be based off the motion sensor. Now before we're done, we have to do the interactive setup for this thing, and it's really easy. Um, obviously do this in God mode, and then kick your uh, your numpad, uh, your numlock key on. And then if you follow the key controls over there in the bottom right, left control plus numpad, you can enlarge. Um, and all this uh, is based upon the orientation of the sensor. Uh, one thing, the motion sensor can't activate anything behind it, so be mindful of the orientation. Um, I, I tend to prefer to put these on walls um, where they're not as intrusive as, say, having them on the floor, but on the floor works as well. So in the case of uh, this guy, skinny him up, and then let's see, actually, I'm going to pull him down one, and then I'm going to pull him down. Sometimes these keys are a little bit weird to get used to. And I'm gonna make this thing only activate in the block right here. It's kind of a one by two, but I call it a one by one. This block right here. So hit escape, come out of the uh, interactive setup. Uh, these numbers over here, by the way, if you're doing uh, this multiple times, you can just input these numbers. Uh, you don't have to do the interactive setup and float around in God mode and you know spend an hour trying to get the, the key combinations right and everything. So once I enter this, uh, this guy, here, let me make sure this thing is on. I may not have switched it on. Okay. That switches power to the motion sensor. Boom. See that? So the motion sensor is only active when I'm standing in this one by one square here. Anytime you leave it, the station turns off. And so that's saving you 150 kilowatts, 150 power units. So real easy to set up. Uh, there's nothing to it. Uh, don't be uh, daunted by this because it has the word circuit and you see these, you know, 4X and 2X and all this other weird stuff in here. Um, real simple to do uh, to do uh, power inverter signal logic stuff. So anywho, um, I hope this uh, video helped out. Um, hit that like button if you would, please, and subscribe if you like what you saw. And I'll be putting up uh, new content all the time, primarily Imperion and some other games, things like that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, down in the uh down in the uh, questions and comments area and appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.